Welcome back to Seasons, and today's title in the book is What's Yours is Mine and What's Mine is Mine. And today I'll probably be reading a lot from the book. So let's begin. What's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine, so hand it over now. Such self-centered attitudes are quite common in preschoolers. However, a wise parent or caregiver know that such attitudes need to be stopped by loving and firm redirection. If these tendencies aren't checked in children, they'll grow up to become embittered, frustrated, jealous, and disillusioned adults. These adults tend to rail at a world that refuses to bend its knee at their misbelief that they are entitled to as much, if not more, than the rest of the world. As we mature in our faith, God encourages us to put aside such childish and selfish behaviors. Jesus uses a couple of parables to get that point across. The first is Matthew 20, verse 1 to 16, and it's a parable of the workers in the vineyard. In that story, a landowner hires a bunch of workers early in the morning, promising them a very good wage for their work for the day. Those workers couldn't believe their good fortune and were very happy with the landowner's generosity up to the moment they realized that the landowner hired people in the last hour and paid those people the same wage. The more than fair wage that they received was no longer just in their eyes. But let's look at it realistically. Their personal circumstances hadn't changed. Their employer didn't reduce their salaries to pay the newcomers. And yet they allowed envy and jealousy to overshadow the joy they had once felt. Jesus addresses this sort of attitude again in Luke 15, 11 to 32. The elder son always had access to his father's wealth and cattle. And he also carried a lot of favor just by being the eldest son. And yet this man failed to take full advantage of all that was at his disposal. It was only upon his younger brother's return to the family that the elder brother suddenly complained at his father's perceived favoritism. I'll let those parables speak for themselves. Let's pray. Father God, we confess we have no need to feel insecure or jealous of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask your forgiveness when we have not recognized or taken full advantage of the unmerited favor you have always lavished upon us as your children. We thank you for your unending abundant supply of grace and love. And once again, we ask you to forgive us for not recognizing the rich storehouse you have given us. Give us hearts that join in a song of celebration when others receive blessings in their lives. Father God, we thank you for the gift that you want to bestow upon us, and that is intentional gratitude. A grateful heart will always be protected against the poisons of envy and jealousy.